Hey everybody. So the purpose of this video overall today is the fact that I recently watched a video from a researcher that has, let's call it like 3 million more subscribers than me and like probably a few more PhDs than me, right? But like uh, overall their arguments are compelling and technically correct, but then also like um, not fully correct, right? Like a, a critiquable overall is what I want to highlight and point out within this video. And then the big critique overall that I have with their arguments, and it's a lot of people in, in this camp too, like some big names as well, right? And they cite them as well, like Gary Marcus and um, they, like Jan LeCun too, but I, like I think Jan LeCun less, less and less so on that side of the camp than people realize overall, like um, just looking at his mo most recent and more recent work, which is very Transformers focused and Transformers based, right? I think he's kind of reaching the same conclusion that I am, that there's no general uniqueness to these arguments overall as it applies to Transformers. And then so the big like criticism that I want to frame around all of this is the fact that the researcher, when I watch their video, they frame all of it and they point towards and they utilize video diffusion models. And then so video diffusion models at this point uh, do utilize transformers, right? It's diffusion in transformers is the architecture. And then so it is technically correct to analyze a video diffusion model within uh, the general architecture, but it's uh, like a, a video diffusion model and an LM model are not the same at all, right? And then it's that flexibility of the architecture and the unique differences of the LM model that make up the whole general argument, right? Just focusing and narrowing the argument on video diffusion alone is like, um, it leads to two different conclusions overall. And then, so that's kind of what I want to just go through in this video. And then, so uh, with a portion of the script, some of it is like uh, helped written by AI and, and assisted by AI, right? And prompted out. Um, but uh, there's at the very end, I want to highlight that very specifically. But so within that, let's dive into, uh, this overall. So beyond fancy autocomplete, why AI is smarter than we think. If you follow the conversation about AI, you'll hear two conflicting opinions. One side suggests that AI like ChatGPT is on the verge of becoming truly intelligent. The other, often voiced by prominent researchers, claims it's all a house of cards, just a fancy autocomplete that can only remix what it has already seen. A uh, common argument from these skeptics is to point at video generation models. They'll show how an AI asked to create a video of a person walking will often fail to keep the right number of fingers or move their legs in an impossible way. The argument is, see, it doesn't understand walking. It's just stitching pixels together. Language models like ChatGPT are doing the same thing, just with words. And then this argument is persuasive, but it's based on a fundamental misunderstanding. It confuses what AI is doing today and what its underlying technology is capable of doing tomorrow. And most importantly, it compares two completely different things. Here's a breakdown of why the fancy autocomplete argument is flawed and why the technology behind AI, the transformer, is far more powerful than critics give it credit for. One, the mistake confusing a toddler with an adult. The most common critique of today's AI is, lim uh, is simply listing its current failures. It can't reason about a complex legal case or it fails at simple physics problems. This is all true, but it's not a unique criticism. It's like looking at a toddler who can't do calculus and concluding that humans are fundamentally incapable of mathematics. An AI model's current inability to perform a task perfectly is a snapshot of its current development, not a final verdict on its potential. The technology is new. Focusing on today's limitations is judging the future of the entire automotive industry based on the first car that could barely go five miles an hour. The real question isn't, is it perfect now, but does the technology have a path to become to becoming better? Like, I mean, 
those, that's a good, and there's two perfect examples that are, are buried within that, right? Let's look at the uh, invention of the engine, of the automobile engine, and then also the invention of the airplane. When the airplane was first invented, there's a famous quote that said it would take like 10,000 years or a million years or something to go from uh, like the Wright brothers until space, right? Until like getting to space. And then it took like 50 years <laughs> or less, uh, like 30 years. Uh, and then so uh, pretty like small gap within that, right? As to uh, that progression, like the, the progression of going and, and uh, getting the first glider to go like 200 feet to outer space in like 30 years. Uh, was that progression and then think of like the Model T like think of like putting a, a Model T engine in your car today <laughs> Like what you do that and that's uh, like a hundred years ago, right? Uh, and then so within that you can see Massive progression within that like and an, an engine is still an engine a, a, a plane is still a plane a rocket is still a rocket, but these things have had significant advancement beyond like a, a really beyond comprehension when you actually like take the time to consider it on those levels and that's where we're at with ai across the board today like especially like video diffusion models are a good example of that overall right look at like the floating hands and fingers and all of those things those things are, are starting to be uh worked on and, and better perfected you're starting to see them less and less and, and really like non-existent now with like the finger things and things like that specifically because of uh, these advancements within the technology, right? You can't compare like the Wright brothers to 20 years later or two years later. And then so that brings us to, to the flawed comparison. And this is an important one as well. Blending pixels versus blending ideas. This brings us to the main flaw in the skeptical argument, the comparison between a video AI and a language AI. This is a technical mistake that leads to a completely biased result. A video AI is a pixel painter. A video model learns the statistical patterns of pixels. It learns what light, color, and motion look like. When it fails, it's because it doesn't have a true underlying concept of a human body or physics or any other concept, period, right? It's just painting what it thinks should come next based on billions of references of photos, what it thinks it should look like. It's interpolating or blending visual data. It's always, its reward mechanism is always 100% what does this look like, right? Whereas a language AI is a concept library. Uh, LLM learns the statistical patterns of concepts. It's training data. All of the human language and code is a massive map of how ideas relate. And then this difference is everything. If you ask a video model to interpolate between a picture of a cat and a picture of a dog, you get a blurry, nonsensical cat dog, something like in between, right? If you ask a language model to interpolate concepts, you get analogical reasoning. The classic example is this. If you take the model's internal concept for king, subtract the concept for man, and add the concept for woman, the model will land on the concept of queen. What critics call just interpolation is in a conceptual space, a form of inference or reasoning. Blending pixels is a visual trick. Blending concepts is the basis of a thought. And the overall bottom line within this is that like a, a LLM model and a video diffusion model are trained on two different things overall, right? Saying that a video diffusion model is 100% inflexible is 100% true, but because an, a video diffusion model is never actually, like this is a known thing throughout, right? That they're never actually like uh, trained on physics. And then so when it, or they haven't been in historically, and we're starting to, to work on and figure out and tackle that problem, right? How exactly do you get these models, a video diffusion model where you're teaching it exactly this, a, a different process overall than language, how to uh, actually understand the concepts and, and the concept of physics and the, the concept that physics is related to these things and that it needs to relate this concept of physics uh, overall within its image and the fact that you're seeing 
that being able to be played out more and more and better and better within the models is showing and is a counter to those inflexibility arguments, right? <laughs> the fact that like, uh, like it's, um, those arguments serve to show the, the problems and the gap that exists today, but that's the exact problem that's being worked on because it's known. And then so I don't think it's a flaw overall as to uh, how we'll never be able to reach AGI or anything close to it because of the architecture when the architecture isn't a flaw within that. It's our current training and understanding of the training that's the flaw and that's being worked on and corrected. And that leads us to three, the secret weapon, the transformer's flexibility. Critics often say an LLM is limited because it's just trained to predict the next word. This is a profound misunderstanding of how it learns. The training method predicting the next word is just a trick to force the model to learn something much deeper. Imagine you had to predict the next word in a million physics textbooks. To get good at this task, you can't just memorize sentences you'd be forced eventually to learn the rules of physics. The transformer is the underlying architecture or brain design for both video and language models. It's proven to be an incredibly flexible learning machine. Researchers are now using this exact same architecture for tasks beyond just tasks, a text, for example, learning physics. Scientists are training transformers by showing them videos from a virtual world. The model with no prior instructions learns the rules of that world, like object permanence, knowing an object still exists when hidden, and basic physics just by watching. And then this is the big criticism of current like models, right? That people say that they're not world models. And, and I agree with you, current models are not world models, but that is not a flaw that is inherent to the architecture itself. It's a flaw of current training mechanisms that's being accounted for and starting to be taken care of, right? And then as you can, like Jan LeCun himself has released and, and Meta themselves are a big fan of releasing world models that are transformer encoders. There's nothing inherent that says that a transformer encoder can't be a world model, just that it's not today. Second is understanding biology. Transformers are being used to predict the complex 3D shapes of proteins, a, pro a problem that has baffled scientists for decades. And then like a lot of people wanna go back and forth all around this, like is this 100% unique, is this good, bad, et cetera. But the fact is, is that like we're, we're there, right? And so that's discussion that's happening around that. And so the transformer isn't just a text machine, it's a rule learning machine. It can learn the rules of grammar, the rules of physics, or the rules of biology, depending on what data you feed it. And then that leads us to four, which is the magic step, when the map can map itself. And then this brings us to, and this is AI. So this brings us to the final most important point, what happens when the concept library becomes so big that it includes concepts about itself. My training data didn't just, the, the AI, didn't just include facts about the world, it includes, included all of humanity's conversations about facts. It included scientific papers, philosophical, philosophical debates, and articles on logic. To get good at predicting this text, a model must not only learn what a fact is, it must learn what reasoning is, what logic is, and even what an AI model is. This is the secret you're seeing. An advanced LLM isn't just a static map of facts. It has become so complex that it's created a map of the map. It has an internal abstract concept of reasoning and can then use that concept to solve a problem it's never seen before. This is why an LLM can perform meta-reasoning. It can't think about its own thinking. It can, it can think, uh, be prompted to think step-by-step step, and it will use its abstract concept of step-by-step -step problem solving to do a better job. A video model doesn't have this ability. It has no concept of itself, it just paints. An LLM by being trained on the entirety of human thought has been forced to learn how to think. This is the real path to AGI. 
We're not just building a bigger dictionary. We're building a system that learns the very rules of learning itself. And then so the bottom line to point out within this is like this, this is like 100 percent not making an argument um, around like consciousness or anything like that at all. Right? First of all, like I don't know what consciousness is in order to define it. And then secondarily, whatever you define it under uh, and then whatever human definition of consciousness that you would put under it, these models wouldn't be overall. And then so like the discussion isn't around that at all. It's the uh, exactly what it is that the, the the model is capable of creating a map of the map of understanding uh, that it, it is the map, right? And then uh, the significance of that is uh, different than a model that is like uh, just a, a a literal paintbrush overall, right? And then uh, the difference within that is that it's the same underlying architecture that gets you to those two different models overall, right? And then it's just a matter of adding a lot more parameters, a lot more training, better training and different forms of training and more data. And then that's like the bottom line, a different reward function. And then those all translate into different things, right? And that's, uh, I mean, to me overall, like uh, no different kind of than how my understanding of evolution works <laughs> as it too, like, how I've been taught with it overall, right? It's all guided by that reward function and then kind of just doing uh, that same thing will get you like different outcomes and different results within like the same systems uh, in like similar or different environments depending on the, the shifting and the changing of that reward, that underlying reward function, right? And then to me, it's kind of breaks down similarly to those same types of concepts when we're looking at these things and, and looking at it from these ways and this framing overall. And then so the bottom line of this overall that I want you to take away from this particular video is, is that uh, arguments about very specifically around uh, the diffusion elements of uh, models are non-unique right across the board like i haven't i have yet to see a singular architecture that like even even alternative architectures right like hrm or anything like that um that aren't like at the end of the day uh reliant and going back to diffusion processes like I, i'm pretty certain that the human brain operates off of like a diffusion uh, similar uh process to diffusion overall <laughs> i think that that's uh, I think it's a, a built in part of the 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 um, calculation. And then so within that, it's just a matter of how uh, do you uh, most effectively utilize diffusion. And then within that, as I've showcased to you, you can utilize diffusion to just be a paintbrush or you can utilize diffusion to generate thought. And then what is the difference between that? It's been a philosophical argument for 200 plus years now, right? Uh, within uh, all of that and, and, and on that side of that. And then I, I don't have that full answer within it, but uh, I have the answer that the, the diffusion architecture and the transformer architecture specifically uh, seems to be and is flexible enough all around these arguments, right? And then again, like all of these alternative architectures that I see, uh, et cetera, the criticism is either non-unique to transformers or transformers could absorb the alternative architecture and there'll be no reason and it would actually be more beneficial to run alternative architecture plus transformers as opposed to just alternative architecture alone. Um, and then so for all of those reasons, like a lot of these critiques that I see around this to me just tend to be off base. Uh, and then so wanting to just give another side of that, right? Because <laughs> like, uh, uh, again, I'm about like 3 million short on the um, subscriber count comparatively, but you could help out with that <laughs> overall, uh, if you like, but um, that's uh, where it is overall and where I stand on this. And then so uh, if you like to stop the content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.